As an agent, knowing the key things to do to get your offer accepted for your clients is so important. It's not just write it up, submit it, and pray. There are strategic steps that you must take to make your offer desirable and the seller and the listing agent want to work with you and your clients. If you don't know what to do to get your offer accepted, stay tuned, we got you covered. Hey, it's Mark here with the Hiller Group, brokered by eXp Realty. My team and I have you covered here along the beautiful Florida Panhandle from Pensacola all the way through Panama City, where our team has been fortunate enough to serve over 1,300 families in the past 10 years alone along this beautiful Florida Emerald Coast. So how do you get that offer accepted? Well, it starts very early in the process. It starts at the very first step. You must meticulously follow the listing instructions. When you schedule your showing, you are demonstrating to the agent what it's going to be like to work with you. If you don't read the agent notes and you pick up the phone and you call the listing agent and ask him every single thing that's already listed in the listing, that agent is already going to be putting that in the back of their head and go, hmm, is this what it's going to be like to work with this agent the entire transaction? You must ensure you follow the listing instructions to a T. Overlooking key details can be at a disadvantage to you and your clients before you've ever even written the offer. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen to me a hundred times. I've even been on the other side of it where I've thought, man, this agent really isn't even reading what they're doing. By adhering to every specified request, you can avoid simple errors that might undermine your client's chances and keep the listing agent on your good side. This includes calling the correct person listed in the MOS. If the listing is taken by one agent, but they say, hey, call the co-agent, call the co-listing agent for all of your showing requests and you call that main listing agent, that seems like such a simple mistake, but I'm telling you, it will get you off on the wrong foot with certain agents. The next thing you must focus on is understanding the seller's preferences. You must actively communicate with the listing agent to uncover the seller's specific needs and preferences, whether it's a preference for a very quick closing, a need to rent back, or a specific closing date because it aligns with the home that they're purchasing. Understanding these details allows you to tailor your client's offer to directly address the seller's priorities. If you make this a standard practice, you are truly doing what is in the best interest of your client. You can advise what the best options are after you get this information, and then therefore your buyer can make an informed decision on whether those dates align with their schedule. Next up, you must obtain pre-approval for your clients. You must encourage your clients to secure a pre-approval letter from a reputable local lender. This demonstrates to your seller that your client is serious and financially ready to proceed, giving them a competitive edge over buyers who don't have a pre-approval letter. Remember, when rates have dramatically changed, it's happening right now, get your buyer re-approved to verify their buying power hasn't changed. As rates fluctuate and start to climb a little bit higher, you need to make sure that your client is still qualified for what they were originally. We've had a couple instances where rates jumped up a point and next thing you know, the buyer was not able to qualify for the same amount that we were shopping for just a month earlier. You must advise your client to make a strong offer. And what do I mean by a strong offer? You need to help your clients understand the importance of making a competitive offer, especially in markets prone to bidding wars. Locally, homes are still selling with, within 4% of the list price, but you need to find out upfront what is more important to your client, closing costs or monthly payment. The monthly payment is the most important thing. Price really doesn't matter. If that price doesn't align with where your client's monthly payment is, then you, you're not gonna win. So a lender may say your client's pre-approved for 500, but if your client doesn't like the monthly payment at 500, then it's all for nothing. 
Make sure you fully understand what your client is willing to pay on a monthly basis and reverse engineer a plan so you can look at the right price points so you're not shopping for homes and showing them homes that they truly do not want to have a payment for on a monthly basis of that amount. I don't recommend negotiating on price and closing costs. Why complicate the process? There's enough other little things that you're gonna be negotiating on. So try to remember, this has gotta be a win-win. A win for your buyer and a win for your seller. The less things you're actually negotiating on, the better chances your offer is of being accepted. You must guide them on how to evaluate the property value based on comparable sales and current market conditions to make an offer that is both attractive to the seller and fair. If you're not pulling comps on the homes you offer on, you are doing your clients a disservice. You should know upfront if the home is worth what is being asked in the MLS. Next up, minimize your contingencies. Advise your clients to reduce the number of contingencies in their offer, such as those related to financing, selling of their current home, or inspections. Fewer contingencies signify a smoother and faster closing process, making the offer more appealing to sellers. It shows your buyers are reasonable and will go to great lengths to work with your seller. Most listing agents don't love contingencies and may want to keep the home on the market. Also, your reputation and ability to work with other agents is crucial. Here's a perfect example. We got an offer on one of my listings and I advised the seller, I said, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. This agent is a little bit difficult to work with. At the same time, we got another offer in on the property that was lower than the first one. And my seller said, Mark, I want this to be more convenient and stress-free. I wanna go with the other offer so we don't have to deal with that first agent that you told me about. It's not always about the money. It's about how great of an agent you are, about how open-minded you are to making this a win-win for both buyers and sellers. So don't be that agent. You also need to help your clients understand the benefits of being flexible with their closing date to align with the seller's needs. This adaptability can be a significant factor in making their offer more attractive compared to others that are less accommodating. This is supposed to be a win-win for everyone, not just your buyer. You may need to include an escalation clause during multiple offer situations. Yes, it's still happening and could make a big comeback if rates drop. Consider recommending an escalation clause in your client's offer, which states that they're willing to pay maybe $3,000 more than the highest offer up to a certain amount. This strategy can be very effective in ensuring that their offer stays competitive in a bidding war. This strategy was used a ton in 2020 through 2022. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when it comes to escalation clause, reach out to me and I will help you learn all about escalation clause and how they can help you win in a competitive market. You may need to recommend a larger deposit when up against other offers. Another suggestion you could make to your clients is to increase their earnest money deposit to show a stronger commitment and financial stability to the sellers. Or you could make the earnest money deposit non-refundable, which means if your buyers walked away for any reason whatsoever, they would lose that money. A larger deposit or a non-refundable deposit can significantly enhance the credibility of your offer. Next you need to leverage your experience. Use your knowledge and experience of the local market to provide insights into what the sellers are looking for. If you don't have much experience, use your team's experience to help you. Use your brokerage experience to help you. Your expertise in crafting a compelling offer can be a decisive factor in your client's success. Your offers should be based on facts and local data. Get yourself familiar with those facts from the MLS, and we use SunStats here in Florida, which are released on a monthly basis, which gives our agents a 
insight into what is going on in the local market. You must keep your clients prepared to ensure that your clients are well informed about the latest market trends and prepare them to act quickly. Properties can move fast in a competitive market and having their finances and paperwork ready can make a crucial difference. The market has changed in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, it's exactly the same. Acting quickly is strongly advised in this market. You are the guide. Show your value and lead your clients. They need you now more than ever. And I mean emotionally as much as physically. This market we're in right now can be emotionally draining for buyers if they're not finding the right house that they want, as well as being emotionally draining for sellers on the other side because homes are taking longer to sell. Take these steps and try to make a habit of doing all of them for your clients. Just writing an offer blindly or based solely on what they tell you they want without educating them won't yield you good results. No one wants to write a bunch of offers that don't get accepted because you didn't do a little bit of homework and a little bit of research on the front end, ensuring that your offer gets accepted the first time around. And remember, if you get into a counter war, I like to call those, if you counter more than three times, things will get sticky. Emotions get involved and then it becomes, I must win between the buyer and the seller. So I highly recommend putting a competitive offer in from the very get-go so you don't get to that third counter offer because at that point, I probably have a 50-50 chance of actually getting the buyer across the finish line if we go past that third counter because at that point, they're mad, the seller's mad, and it's hard to get those two aligned to cross the finish line with a win-win scenario. You must remember you have to meet in the middle. If you don't keep it a win-win for both sides, you're going to have one side that feels taken advantage of and the entire rest of the transaction will be a bear. Hope this was helpful. Hit the like and subscribe button and we will see you on the next one.